This is the first video in Module 9, Functions and Relations is the module, and we're going to start with an introduction to functions in this video. So I love this image. This is a picture of a function. This is a physical function machine. A function is like a black box. So. Now, of course, you all know about functions at this point, right? I'm assuming everybody has a, ba a background in algebra, so you all know about functions and have heard about functions, but we're going to, in this module, we're going to talk about some of the subtleties of functions that can be important in uh, math and computer science. So a function is like a black box. It takes inputs. one or more inputs. It processes them somehow. And then it outputs uh, some kind of a response. And we're used to functions that take numbers. So in this function machine, um, a function always has a rule of some sort. So this one, I'm going to have, this is the plus 3 rule. And if we put a number 5 into the function, that's our input. The rule processes it. So we take the input plus 3, so that gives us 8. And out comes the answer, 8. Right. We can do this in all sorts of ways, and our rules can be quite complicated. We pass in a 10, and our rule is minus 4, then we're going to get a 6 out. Right, Pretty straightforward. And we're used to functions involving numbers. But there's no reason we are limited to numbers. Right? We can have um, functions in computer science. Right? If you've used a uh, language such as Java or C++, you may have run into where you take in a string, and so the string is maybe high, is our input, and our rule is to convert this to lowercase. Which in Java, I believe, is two lowercase, is the function and out comes the result, which is high. Okay. Um, so it turns out there's many different kinds of functions. Uh, and this is an, an example of a Java function. We can have something um, even more generic, right? What if uh, I put in an apple? and my rule is to double whatever comes in, what I'm going to be left with coming out, so this goes in, coming out, we're going to have two apples. Know that these are very good apples, but there we go. Okay, so a function is a very generic concept. It's a concept where we have something that takes an input, processes it in some manner, and then gives some kind of a response. So the way we define a function uh, at this level of math, this is not the way it's typically done in algebra. You're typically probably used to seeing something like f of x equals 
2x squared plus 5. Right? This is how a function is typically divide, uh, defined in algebra. Um, and we would still use this format, but now, more specifically, we're going to write this, and this is a description of how the function works. So this right here is the function name. Actually, let's use a blue pen. This is the function name. And in addition to specifying what the, the function does, what process, how it handles the inputs, um, here we're going to define, this is called the domain. Again, probably something you're familiar with from algebra. Now here's where there's something different. Here I'm going to call this the codomain. In algebra, you probably talked about domain and range. So the difference, let's make a little section over here. The difference is that the codomain is the set of values that the function could output. Well, the range is a set of outputs, a set of values that it does output. And I know it's a little bit of a subtle distinction But in general, mathematicians typically talk about, well, this function take, has a domain of the integers, say. So we might say that we have a function f whose domain is the integers, and the output is going to be real numbers. Now, could there be some real numbers that may not come up in this particular function? Possibly. Um, but rather than uh, specifying that the range is, for example, all real numbers greater than 1.3 and less than 2.7, which is what you typically do when you do a range, um, the codomain is, is typically more of a, a, of a general set, kind of the overall arching, what does this function do? Oh, it takes an integers and it gives out a real number. Okay, so let's look at the definition of a function. A function is a, f is a relationship from set x, from is important, from set x to set y, if and only if every element of x matches to some element of y. And the way we write this formally is we say for all x in the set, little x in the set big x, there exists a y in our codomain. such that x, the pair x, y is an element of our function set. Now you're probably more familiar with the other way this is done. This is also written um, right. I'm assuming you're familiar with this, uh, this type of description for the function where we take an input x and we get a y. Um, but I want you to see that there's this other way of um, writing it as well. This is the set theory way. So here we're talking about the domain and the codomain are both sets. What is the set of elements that the inputs come from? What is the set of elements that the outputs come from? And f is a function over the sets that contains these pairs um, such that the function is satisfied. 
So it's a little bit of a different way of looking at it, but it is equivalent to what we're used to where we say f of x equals y. So this is the first property, and both of these properties have to be true for this, uh, for the function to be a function. So the second one, we say no element in x matches to more than one element in y. So again, let's write that formally. You can say for all the x's, all the elements in big X, and for the elements y and z in our codomain y, we say if x and y are a pair in the function, a function pair, and x and z are a function pair, then y must equal z. Because our, our part of the definition of a function is that it's deterministic, which means if you put in a 3, you're always going to get the same output. You're not going to get one output one time and one output a different time, which is what these examples are saying, right? Here we put in an x and we get a y as output. Here we get an x and we get a z as output. We can't do both. So the only way if this exists is that y and z must be the same thing. So if you think about this, this is actually the same as a rule you've probably heard of in algebra. In an algebraic function, this is usually called the vertical line test. Right? If you have a function such that drawing a vertical line Or if you have a, a shape such that if you draw a vertical line and there are two spots that touch on that vertical line, it's not a function. Right? And that's saying the exact same thing. Here, when we do algebra, this horizontal axis is usually our input, and the vertical axis is our output. So what this is saying is that you can't give one input, this, this x um, hat right here, you can't put in one input and get two outputs. It doesn't work that way. That's not a function. So this is not a function. Um, yeah. Okay, and recall that here f is the function x is the domain and y is the codomain okay so let's take a look at these Remember, these are the two rules. These are what make a function. Not everything is a function. So it's not quite as simple as I implied at the beginning where I said you give an input, it does some process, and you get an output. There's these two re restrictions to that. All right. The restrictions are that every element of A matches to some element of B and that no element in A matches to more than one element of B. So if we take a look at these, we can look at this first one. Uh, let's look at this letter A. Let's look at rule one. Well, does every dot in A have an arrow coming from it? Yep. That's rule one. Does every, so this one, another way of saying this is to say in a drawing, um, does every dot in the domain have a line coming out have an arrow coming out All right that's rule one the second rule 
is that no element in A matches to more than one element of B. So do any of these spots in A have two arrows coming out of them? Nope, they don't. And so this is indeed a function. So that's sort of how we can define two is, um, are there more than one? Well, no, that should be exactly one. Let's do it that way. So you can really think of this is that each spot should have exactly one arrow coming from it from the domain. Now, again, this is the difference between codomain and range. This B right here is a codomain because we have an element in it that's not covered. And that's fine. Functions, that's, that's not part of the definition for a function. Um, but we can't say that B is the range because there are other R options that haven't been handled. Okay, let's take a look at B. Now, b is not a function because it has this lone uh, dot right here with no arrows. And so that violates um, not a function. That violates rule one. Okay, so that's not one. How about over here at c? Well, at c, we have a the problem where we have a dot with two arrows coming out of it, and that violates rule two. So that's not a function either. Let's look at D. Is there exactly one arrow coming out of every element in set S? Yes. There are no, no dots sitting by themselves. Right? We don't have this scenario where we have a lone dot. It's not there. And we don't have two arrows coming out of any dot, two or more. So yes, this is a function. All right, so we have two functions here, function and function. And these arrow diagrams are a common way that functions are uh, drawn. Um, we use functions all the time. You've seen functions in math, right? So here's an example of an algebraic function. And in computer science, we're often, depending on the language, you might call them methods. So Java, it's called a method. Other languages call them functions, because that's really what it is. In this mathematical one, we take an input, x, and we get an output after evaluating this expression. So let's figure out what the domain Let's do this in blue. So the domain of this math example is going to be the set of all real numbers, right? Because in general, in algebra, unless we say otherwise, we're going to get uh, the general input is for all real numbers. So set, so actually, let's do it this way. Let's do it. We say f is defined by the real numbers. Now, notice if we put in a negative one into x, we're going to get an imaginary value here. So if we if we allow negative numbers in the domain, this is going to give us the complex numbers as the codomain. Right, so our domain, the real numbers. And our codomain equals the complex numbers. Right? If you somehow restricted this to only taking positive real numbers, then your codomain would be the real numbers. Um, but without any additional information, we are not restricting it. Imaginary numbers are allowed which means our complex, our codomain is complex. 
And in computer science, here's a function. Here the function name is sum. And what's the input? Well, we can see here that our input is of type double double. So this function is going to take two inputs and they're both going to be double. So what we tend to do is we call this, um, it's, it's going to take double, or actually let's say, well, we can't say real numbers because it may, there are real numbers that will not fit in a double. Right, so it's a pair of doubles. And what's the output? Well, the output is also a double here. So that means we're going to have a double. So our domain is the set of all pairs of doubles. And our codomain is the set of all doubles, right? And those two are different. They're not the same thing. And that's it for the introduction. In the following videos, we'll talk more about um, some properties of functions.